Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hi guys, it's episode 3 of this channel, Re-Up. I'm drinking tea because I'm feeling fluish even though it's a Friday night. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to everyone who subscribed, everyone who's liked the previous videos and who's even gone back maybe to watch my older videos. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate everyone who's taking the time to um, watch and don't forget to like. I feel like I haven't been saying that enough. I definitely haven't been saying that enough. I've been reminding you to subscribe but not like. It's all free and it grows the channel and it just gives me inspiration to keep going guys. So I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And in today's news, I'm being dramatic. In today's news, we're going to talk about my visit to an art exhibition. As I told you last week on Saturday, I attended an art exhibition. It was at the UJ Art Gallery and the name of the artist who was exhibiting his work is Gakiso Pat. Let me try. I have his name written down here. I hope I'm saying it right. I'm Zulu, guys. Um, I apologize if I said it wrong, but I will put the spelling on the screen. So, the name of the exhibition was called Urban Soundscapes, and it was um, some unseen work of his. It was different kind of mediums. He uses different kind of mediums. He's a painter. He's a sculptor. And he explores um, basically the theme of the works that he put on that day was trying to explore Joburg, downtown Joburg, but on a canvas and through sculpture. So from what I gather, um, he does use like refuse and discarded items from the city to do his sculptures and most of his canvas work is basically um, acrylic paint which is a water-based paint not to be confused with watercolor paint not the same thing it's acrylic paint on canvas by this time you might be asking yourself what gives this girl the authority to speak on this topic <laughs> okay let me tell you so I did mention on last week's episode, last week's video, I did mention that I'm interested in all things art. So this is a brief history of me. So I've always gone to schools that were very much artistically inclined is how I'd describe it. So like I did art as a subject from primary school. I did art as a subject all the way up to matric. So my matric was everything that i love um i even did mass literacy i'm one of those girls yes i always knew i was going to career wise i always knew i was gonna go into the arts and these were my three options going into varsity okay wait backtrack a bit so like i said always knew that i was going to go into like the creative field or a creative field so these are the subjects that i studied in school so i studied fine art um which involves art history as well i also did drama performing arts i did um obviously the other subjects about english about um, maths literacy like i mentioned i did computer studies because what was the point of biography biology I didn't do geography so that's me matriculating and then when I went to varsity I studied dramatic arts at WITS my three options as a degree that I thought I would go into was number one drama number two um, interior design and then option number three was um, fine art so um, I ended up taking drama 
and trying to major in drama and fine arts <laughs> which was a wrong turn a bit of more than i can chew there because they're both very time consuming um courses so i ended up majoring in the drama section but i majored in writing and arts management so do you get the picture it doesn't make sense so yeah fast forward to last week saturday um and my thoughts so the exhibition was lovely his work was beautiful and best of all um my favorite painting which featured at the end of last week's video was his painting called um happy days happy days is about i would i would estimate it's about two meters by one meter canvas and it's acrylic paint and the dominating color on the canvas is yellow i saw some bit of orange some bit of red so the the artwork looks like i would call an expressionist piece of artwork definitely falls under the umbrella of modernist artwork um and it was just a beautiful painting and it's 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 retailing guys yo you won't believe it's retailing artists make money like when you make it as an artist like there's potential to make money um and remember art appreciates so it's on sale for 150,000 rand oh my god like really if i was a rich bitch and i had a mansion that would be the painting i would have gone home with okay so the painting made so much sense for me if he's calling it happy days and I will put a picture of the painting somewhere on the screen. If he's calling it happy days, it was just for me, yellow is the epitome of a happy color. It's, I can say my favorite color. And it, uh, the pattern was almost like the brush strokes were like, there wasn't a distinct pattern, but the brush strokes were almost dancing across the canvas. And they were so much yellow, but these little sparks of orange in between, like if that was a soundscape of happiness, it totally makes sense. If that is his depiction of what happiness looks like, I was like, oh, oh, but Pat, you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. And there was other work but i didn't pay much attention to it and there were sculptures like i said he does sculptures and he makes them from um reused uh discarded items they were all also very beautiful you can tell that he's a man that has been doing this for ages i mean he was born in the 1950s he's a mature artist and this is his career and he's also exhibited overseas so i also wanted to just talk a bit about the history of art in south africa and comment below if you want me to do more of these like i'm very up to going to art exhibitions i'm very up to going to art galleries and just talking more about the art fine art landscape in the south african context right now so it's very interesting for me having studied art history up until year one of varsity it's very interesting for me if you think about the south african context that it's sad and it's part of the reason why i have a duke on right now is because i'm feeling all sorts of I'm feeling all sorts of child of the soil vibes in my heart right now because I've been thinking about like since going to the exhibition I've been thinking about how African fine art didn't get a chance to go through a natural progression Snare, what do you mean by that so what I mean by that is that um, we were colonized you know so if you try and follow the trajectory of african art it goes from 
I googled this word, let me tell you. It goes from paleo um, paleolithic, yes, it goes from paleolithic rock art to what we would call contemporary art, right? Because the majority of the society, which is black people, people of color as well, were fighting the apartheid system. Well, not that. First, they were fighting um, colonization, then apartheid, then systemic racism, then still now, we still fight systemic racism, we still fight a lack of education, we still fight a lack of inclusion, especially when it comes to um, subjects like art. So, the majority of the people of color, the majority of people being people of color in this country don't get an education in fine art. I was one of the privileged people that went to schools that exposed people to these kind of things, you know, and I'm very grateful for that. But to think that we went from rock art to um, rock art, then from rock art we were obviously as a society you're never gonna stop creating art but the center of the topic of the art then became protest art um because for people of color contemporary art if contemporary art reflects the times that we live in then it had almost had to be um protest art and I'm not saying <coughs> and I'm not saying that I'm not saying that there was an art that was not protest art but you'll be you'll be very you'll find it very difficult to find that kind of art you know and now we are in a more relaxed state there's more freedom and people like um Ubabu Pet are doing work as he's doing you know and I was just thinking how blessed we are to have him and people like him who have lived through those trying times but have seen the other side and they get to make art about joy and they get to make art about the current state of affairs in this country might not be great but it's on a lighter note you know and it was beautiful for me to see that. And I think maybe it's a lesson that we can all try to think of and incorporate in our everyday lives to say, we still have a lot to go through in this country. We still have a lot to fix, but in your space, what can you draw from that brings you happiness and how can you bring that happiness to the people around you, you know? And there's also still a space for art that Art will always reflect the society and there's still a space for art that reflects the injustices of this world always but um, that painting just stood out for me for those reasons sorry about the rant but you I hope I was speaking succinctly and you understand what I'm saying it was such a beautiful beautiful experience and I love that artwork if someone is rich enough out there to buy it for me please please um so yeah that's my two cents worth about the exhibition and that artwork in particular and the evolution of south african artwork that has had to like be sped up from that art to now contemporary modernist expressionist which is beautiful 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 and maybe in another video we can get to talking about how because of what was happening on the african continent as a whole um african artists did not really get the chance to go deeper into other genres of fine art that happened through the ages like your realism your renaissance your expressionist your baroque your cubism all those things um that were happening around the world but we were busy fighting fighting for our freedom you know we have a dark past but we also have very beautiful 
moments in that dark past and art always captures those moments and i'd like to speak so much more about that um so yeah that's my little tidbit about last week's exhibition i really enjoyed it tell me if you want to talk more about art fine art and should we do some theater as well perhaps maybe lovely <laughs> I hear you guys saying yes, okay? So if it's a yes, please comment down below. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. We are on the road to 100 subscribers. I noticed last week I had 36 subscribers and I lost one subscriber. So I'm going to start, I'm going to stop counting the numbers exactly and just let it flow like the water. So we are on our road to 100 and probably when we get to 120 just to make sure that we secure the bag when we get to 120 then i'll announce you know thank you so much for watching guys and don't forget to follow me on instagram and facebook my name is Sneji Mobo, and i love you loads goodbye